Hey friends, Kevin here with my very minimalistic no build minivan camper. I'm going to show you what I have learned doing this in seven years. How to eliminate things so you are only carrying what is beneficial to you. I am done with having setups to where I had to constantly move things around and fill up the front seats at night to be able to use the bed and all that garbage, done, over with, no more. I have been all the way to the West Coast, I have been to Canada, I have been down to Mexico in a minivan. And I made the same mistakes that everyone makes in the beginning by carrying too much stuff. You don't have to carry a lot of stuff, but you can still have everything you need, including a few niceties. Oh, because all minivans have the same basic dimensions, regardless of what brand you have now or that you may buy in the future, you can follow along with this and do basically the same things. Use the parts of this that will work for you because we're all just a little bit different. But here's what I've learned and here's what I have set up for this year. I have a solar panel on top of here between the luggage racks most people will never notice it, so that keeps my van pretty much stealth. There is a cable that runs down. I can run this down through either window in order to use the solar to recharge the portable power stations. Back here in the back right now, I'm using this little Browie brand. That is what is powering this monster-sized refrigerator. Now, I was using a smaller refrigerator for a while, and I actually found another use for it. It still works fine. It was an Alpacool very solid brand no complaints at all i ended up with this set power which is about three times the size and i wasn't sure at first about using something this big in this minivan but what ended up happening was that it didn't cost me any space and it actually made things neater and here's the reason why especially in the summertime i would end up with cases of cola i would end up with cases of water and because I had a small fridge I could only put a few cans a few bottles in there at a time so I was constantly having to move around these cases of drinks with this monster sized fridge now there is room in here to basically put a case like 24 bottles of water 12 cans of soda and me to still have plenty of room in here for food. Now having a fridge this size, especially for one person, is certainly not a necessity, but it has made things nice this year, just as far as storage. And if someone had asked me that a few years ago about carrying something this large, I would have laughed because I didn't understand that my space was going to be the same and because I removed this back seat on this side, that gives me this giant cavity to set this down in. Now, this works fine. It still has plenty of ventilation, but I may find me a little container or something to stick in there, a little more storage, because I can, it would be all right if this came up just a little bit higher. Over on this side, I chose to leave this seat in here for a reason, and I'll show you why in a second. But this gives me a place to put this caddy that simply attaches to the back of the seat and lets me keep things at hand. So you need something to light fires with. Do not get a 99 cent can opener from the cheapo dollar store. Get a good can opener. Trust me on this. You don't want to be in the middle of nowhere and have your cheapo can opener break. I carry a little tablet for some entertainment. And this is my little bag basically my shower stuff, soap, razors, a few extra bandages, but I can just grab it and go in the morning, I'll jump up, open this up, grab the stuff, brush my teeth, just makes things really simple. And the main thing you're going to notice throughout the rest of this video is I really don't have to move things around, I don't have to dig through stuff. Things that are important are right at my fingertips, which is the biggest lesson that I've probably learned and the biggest difference between seven years ago carrying too much stuff and today. So under this cover is a portable flush toilet. For showers I have the electric rechargeable shower and this expandable bucket. Fill this with water, drop the head right down inside, 
Attach my shower and I'm good. I'm a guy. I carry several pair of swim trunks and that's what I wear so I can access everything easily when I am outside taking a shower. And I can do this in tons of places out by myself, go over to a city park in whatever town I'm in and just kind of turn the van in a little bit of a corner where nobody can really see me, look this up, so I can have a shower every day. And that is one of the important things to me. When I am on the road, I want to be clean. You ladies may want to wear a swimsuit or something while you are taking a shower, or you may want to go the privacy tent route. Now, I have carried this around for years. I have only used this a couple of times. When myself and the better half traveled in the minivan together, this was great for her, but I have decided after moving this around the last few years, with this setup that's just going to be me on some trips, I don't need this anymore. So it is gone. That is, again, one last thing I have to deal with. And as long as you have warm water to take a shower in, it really doesn't matter how cold it is outside. I have taken a shower outside when it is 15 or 16 degrees. You won't notice it as long as you have warm or hot water that you have preheated like with this Coleman stove. I can simply reach back here if I need one of the little miniature propane tanks, which will work fine with this stove. If it's winter time, I can carry the little Mr. Buddy heater. There is room for it back there. And there is also room back there for several gallons of water. And those gallons of water that are just gallon jugs that I can refill anywhere are what I refill every day or two so I am able to take a shower. Look at all the, this beautiful floor space and the seat turned around backwards. So I am not stuck with having to sit on my bed and I am not stuck with having to sit under the steering wheel or whatever. So I can lean back and relax in this seat or I can lean back and relax in this turnaround front seat. And if the weather is bad, I actually have enough room in here I could invite someone in. There's plenty of room for me to sit back there and a guest to sit right here and be able to enjoy a beverage and shoot the bull like you do when you meet people out on the road sometimes. I still have built-in storage under this seat I can access. I can still get to the glove box. And a question a few of you asked previously is, isn't this headrest in my way? Doesn't this block my view when I'm driving? From the driver's seat, I can see my outside mirror just fine. It does slightly block looking out that side of the windshield, but your general view, you're not looking that far over anyway. But more than likely, I'm going to go ahead and just pull this headrest off because I won't need it. Now sitting in there, you may have noticed one of these solar lights. These actually come in a set of four. Velcro is your friend when you are doing van life. I have a little strip on here and there's some stuff that Velcro doesn't stick well to, but one of the things it sticks very well to is glass. So what I do is put a little piece of Velcro on each one of these sliding doors, one on the back window, one on the windshield. I then, if I'm camping in a campground somewhere out kind of by myself, I will simply stick one of these to each window. And if there's movement, and moving around in the van amazingly has never set these off. But if I need to get out of the van and I reach over and open this sliding door, it will be enough motion, it will cause this light to come on. If an animal or a person walks up next to the van, within six or eight feet of the van, it will also cause this to go off. So some nice little added security. Because the middle row of seats, of course, were taken out completely, I have room to access tools and various things under here. This runs all the way through, so even if you wanted to carry something like fishing rods, that gives you a great place to put them. But let me show you the necessities I carry. From left to right, I have a rechargeable battery-operated tire inflator. I have a tire repair kit. Because I am liable to be so far out somewhere, I have a problem, I am going to have to do this myself. So that way, without having to take the tire off of the vehicle, I can plug the tire, pump the tire up, and be able to drive to where I need to go. Jumper cables are great for helping other people, but it doesn't help you if you are alone. And I have been in a state park before 
where I was the only person there in this state park, I think in Arkansas, the campground was about 10 miles from any other building or anything. And amazingly enough, I woke up one morning to a dead battery, which is why jumper cables don't help. So you need a booster pack big enough to be able to start your vehicle should something weird happen. In the event I actually had to change a tire, I have this big breaker bar because the professionals that put your tires on in the tire shop probably used a very heavy duty impact. And with the little dinky tools that come with your van, you may not be able to get the lug nuts off. So I have this breaker bar and I have the correct sockets for my lugs. And when you have something this long, it takes no effort to get these lugs on and off of a vehicle. You could be an 80 pound weakling and still be able to bust the lugs loose with this. And then a set of very heavy duty toe straps. This is Fordham brand, the same as that black case you'll see back there in a moment. Very well made, very high quality stuff, very high rating. So if I am stuck, I have something that someone can pull me out so I don't necessarily have to stop what I'm doing and call a tow truck. Now it is easy to find someone to help pull you out if you're stuck, which can happen really easily if you're in the West dealing with sand, but it is not, they may not have this kind of stuff with them. So if you have it again yourself and you're prepared, it is really easy to get just about anyone to help you. Door panels of the van, sunscreen, umbrellas, binoculars. This caddy that goes between the seats, this has a little locking compartment has two drink holders, has space here, plenty of space in here, another set of swim trunks under here just lets me throw receipts and all of my little cables. More storage here, place for some hand sanitizer, place for some spray sanitizer. Just keeps things neater up front. And then for safety in here, I have this Van True driving camera. Not only to get good footage when I'm driving or interesting animals I may pass, but also in case I am in an accident that was caused by someone else, I can prove what happened. If you notice, we are up to this point, I have not gotten to anything that I have to move something to get to something else. Bed frame holds 750 pounds, really solid. Don't buy those cheap store-bought cot things. Four inch foam mattress. I've had this five or six years, washable, removable cover, as comfortable as anything I have ever slept on. I used to carry three plastic crates. Now I have two plastic crates plus this container here. I believe I'm going to pick up another one of these containers and eliminate both of those plastic crates. But let me show you what is inside of each of these and why I have those items. Case number one here is basically going to be bicycle stuff because often I will carry a bicycle with me and I have room to just throw that bicycle in here. If you are not carrying a bicycle, you pretty much could eliminate this container right there. Container number two, mini donuts. Actually, that's just a box, and I have little items in here. This basically is my clothing. Underwear, shorts. I do try to carry a nice shirt and a pair of jeans that I almost never, ever use, but just in case I end up somewhere I've, that I have to attend a funeral or... Um, somebody wants to go out to a restaurant somewhere a little bit nicer or you're invited to somebody's house for something, you could then at least be halfway presentable. And several extra sets of sheets, a couple of towels, everything I need right inside. And I am able to access these from either one of these side doors. That brings us up to container number three, which is this really nice folding container. Has pockets everywhere, all along the outside, on each end. It has a Velcro top. If you choose to use it, you can remove this completely. And in here, I have the pan I need for cooking. Used to carry a pot and a pan. I am down to just a pan now. I can heat soup in this. I don't need a pot to do that in. So one, that is it. 
my bicycle helmet so I can grab it and go if I choose to go bicycling, and a coffee pot. Over in this section, I have a second little portable power station, insulated mug, and I have room in here for cans of food. And again, I can easily access that from either side of the vehicle or at night, if both of the doors are shut, I can still slide this out, get to what I need. And friends, for this year, for myself in a minivan, this is it. I am not carrying anything else with me. I am done with having setups to where I had to constantly move things around and fill up the front seats at night to be able to use the bed and all that garbage. Done, over with, no more. I am unbelievably happy with this setup, except for the sadness of not having figured this stuff out sooner. So hopefully, any of you guys and gals that are new, you will use some of this to your advantage and avoid a lot of the mistakes I made and just about everybody else made starting out with their camper van, minivan camper, full-size van camper builds that did things that just made everything so inconvenient. So I still have everything I need. I have power stations for electricity. You know, I have a little light here I can plug in. As a matter of fact, in a worst case scenario, this little light, I don't have any electricity. I can actually wind this for a minute and it'll give me several minutes of light. So I am covered with those things. I have this little head strap that's by the same company that made made that container there. This has a light here and also you can turn this on and this entire strip will light up. So I can do things at night hands free if I need to work on something. And again, it's all at my fingertips. So let me know what you think I did right. Let me know what you think I did wrong. Let me know if there is something that you just absolutely cannot live without that I have chosen to live without because we're all a little bit different. And it's okay to have one or two little luxury items. The coffee pot really is my luxury item. I used to carry a toaster. The problem was I would go on a 30 day, 40 day trip and I would use the toaster one time. Gone, don't need it in here. Extra clothing because of weather changes. I have a jacket that's, that's in here with my pillow sleeping bag. So I am fairly covered if the weather changes and it, ends up, it turns cool. If I'm out and run into a blizzard, which can still happen the time of year I am doing this, and I've actually had this happen before, snow in Arizona, I can go find a good will and buy a $7 jacket to get me by for a few days and then toss it or donate it or give it to someone else I meet along the way. I don't have to carry it with me all year. I don't have to have it with me the whole time. Because my goal, my goal in the spring and summer and fall especially, it's not to be inside this van. It is to be out there doing things. This is a place to rest, a place to come back and fix something to eat, and a place to sleep at night. I'm not trying to live in here. I'm trying to live and experience out there. This just lets me do that economically because I would much rather be in this van at night than I would at the Marriott in some city, had plenty of years of doing that in the past, to where I have to go up seven floors in an elevator and a hundred yards down the hallway to get to the room and back and forth and it takes 10 minutes to get back and walk outside to get a breath of fresh air. Don't need that. Don't want that. I'm happy with this. But ask any questions that would possibly help you out with anything that you have planned, the setup you have now, or something you may have planned for the future. If you haven't gotten into this yet, but you're thinking about it, put all of those questions down in the comments. I will do my best to answer them. Other folks here that subscribe to this channel will jump in and they will try to help you. And we'll talk soon.